Hello everybody, this is Napa Fan here, and this is qualifying for race number 13 in season number 10 of the NOFSRL Cup Series. We are here at the Dover International Speedway for tomorrow's Mr. Goodbar 400 here around the Monster Mile in Dover, Delaware. First state of the United States of America. It should be an interesting one tomorrow for 80 laps around this place. And the uh, the tire compound that we use isn't very fast. It's a, it's unique how I had to mod the racetrack to actually get good racing here. They go kind of slow here compared to how they do in real life. Um, and uh, it's a lot like Darlington was last week. Tire wear is massively significant here. About two seconds a lap difference um, when the tire wear is as low as it gets. So... Should be interesting to see how that affects tomorrow's race. This is Andre qualifying here for the Mr. Goodbar 400 at Dover. B.B. Ruiz is in the number two. Will Parrish in the 21. Joshua Harrison in the 29. Dan Park in the 32. R.J. Bishop in the 52. Joey Hightower in the 55. Renan Esip in the 76. And Julio Caesar, last week's winner in the Turkey Hill National Series, in the number 80. Which is, we should expect lap times around the 23 second range, and that's what Will Parrish set right there. Of course, Will Parrish, three starts this season in the Cup Series, and all three of those starts, top 10 finishes. So, this field better watch out if Will Parrish makes the field again. Like we mentioned, you know, we started off the season with half of the races being won by uncharted drivers in the first four races there when, uh, Ashlyn Boyd and John Andrews went to victory lane. B.B. Ruiz is in the number two this weekend. Will Parrish currently the fastest. Of course, the top two advance on. There's R.J. Bishop in the 52 machine. I think this is his third straight race? No. No, actually, it should be, yeah. I think it is his third straight race in this number 52 machine because he won Talladega, which that awarded the hot seat for the Kansas race and the Darlington race. And if that's the case, then R.J. Bishop is, in fact, in his third straight hot seat. But he's yet to make a start this season. He has yet to qualify his way in in this Velocistar number 52. Julio Caesar, though, looking strong. He made last week's cup race after winning the Turkey Hill National Series event and finished runner-up in that uh, South Carolina Education Lottery 400. So uh, the way the tire wear is going to play out here at Dover. This is a relatively similar racetrack. I mean, it's a little bit different. It's quite different, of course, in the way it races, but um, it still has a lot of similarities to Darlington. Starts with the letter D. I'm a college graduate, and this is what I observe. Uh, we got the number two, B.B. Ruiz now to the top of the board with Will Parrish in second. That's the fastest time set so far to 23.298. Good time there out of B.B. Ruiz, and we'll have to see if he can make his first start of the season here in the Cup Series. So far, we've only had 12 drivers from the Turkey Hill National Series of the 36 eligible make a start in the Cup Series. Um, a lot of guys have made multiple starts. Ben Crouch has made five starts. Will Paris has made three starts. John Anders has made four starts. So uh, certain drivers have definitely taken advantage of this hot seat, but none of those three, actually Will Parrish is in the number 21, never mind. But the other two guys, the two guys who have made the most starts in terms of the Turkey Hill hot seat, neither of those guys are in the hot seat this weekend. Dan Park just went to second. Great run there for Dan Park, who actually has won a race in the Cup Series before all the way back in Season 4. He was at the Rockingham Motor Speedway in the United Kingdom. But he just got bumped off by Joey Hightower. And Hightower goes to second. He's in the advancement position along with B.B. Ruiz, who is still the fastest driver here in qualifying. Hightower looking to make his first start of the season here in the NOF SRL Cup Series as well. And it looks like we're going to get two guys who are going to be making their first starts of the season. And for both of these drivers, their first career starts in the NOF SRL Cup Series. So definitely looking forward to see what they can do in qualifying here in a moment. Assuming that they can stay on. Watch out for the 76 of Renan Esip, however. He did improve his time right there, but it was not enough to advance past Joey Hightower. 
And that might be it right there. And it's looking like it's going to be the 55 of Joey Hightower and the 2 of B.B. Ruiz advancing on to the Mr. Goodbar 400 here at Dover. I don't... I don't believe that 76 is going to advance his time anymore. Tire wear does come into play very quickly here at Dover, so doesn't look like he's going to advance his time. The time will run out here, and that will do it for under qualifying here from the Dover International Speedway. And it will be Joey Hightower and the two machine of B.B. Ruiz advancing on and racing in tomorrow's Mr. Goodbar 400. They are going to join the other 40 full-time drivers to set the starting line up here in just a second. So there are the official standings here in Uncharted Qualifying. B.B. Ruiz and Joey Hightower will be racing in tomorrow's race, noon Eastern time. But first, let's go ahead and see how they will line up for tomorrow's 80-lap race here from Dover. And here we go, ready to set the starting lineup here from the Dover International Speedway. The clouds have come, as it's usually the weather around this area all the time. Pretty common sight in the mid-Atlantic region. Uh, this should be an interesting one. This should be a fun race. And last year, this race was insane. Um, I know we had a couple of big wrecks in that one, and it was just... it was I, wasn't, I, want, I don't want to say it was a mess. Um, but it was... Definitely a lot more wild than uh, a lot of the other Dover races we have had in the past. And uh, yeah, we're running that same tire compound. I mean, I, I say tire compound. I just edited the I and I to reduce the grip a little bit. And uh, it definitely creates some very unique racing. And they, like I mentioned in Uncharted Qualifying, they go a little bit slow around this place uh, compared to how they do in real life. But hey, that's just the way it goes. And uh, it's a unique place. And it should be a fun race tomorrow at noon Eastern Time. Hey, I'll actually be here in real life tomorrow, so... That'll be fun. First race I've gone to since the 2019 IndyCar race at Pocono. That's how long it's been since I've been to a... Well, actually, well, I did go to a football game in 2019, but uh, it's been that long since I've been to a motor race, so looking forward to that. Uh, going up with my good friend Andrew, and uh, speaking of Andrew, we'll see if he's out there yet. Not quite yet. Been a bit of a... I keep on saying it's been a bit of a tough season for Andrew. He's actually had a couple of tough races in that 24 machine. Um, outside of that, though, he actually has had a pretty solid season. Just as of late, he's kind of fallen off. Um, but it's going to be interesting to see what he can do here at his home track. My home track as well. And uh, actually, he just went to the top of the board, so... How about that? 23.209 there for Andrew Miller. Last one on a mile-long racetrack at Rockingham last spring. So it's been over a year. Sebastian Kukulon broke a long losing streak last weekend at Darlington. Could be a good opportunity for Miller, possibly, if he can hold on to this top position. Kukulon is second. Zachary Fitzwater, Nicholas Samadio. Now Nathan Stapleton there in fourth. And then you have... Matt Dalio going up to fourth. Nelson Reeves going up to third. Dalio has had a lot of solid runs as of late. Currently sitting ninth in the points as Gatlin Downey has gone to the top of the board. This number 40 machine won here in 2019, I believe, when Nathan Bear drove for this team. But Andrew Miller went there and took that position right back from him. This is a fast car. And so is Jesse Turner in the number 77. And Ace Garcia in the 81 has just gone back to the top. So it's now Garcia, Turner, Downey, Miller, and Daniel McMillan has gone to second. That was a fast time out of the Outer Island Motorsports machine. This is a guy who, like Andrew Miller, last won on the mile-long racetrack at Rockingham in 2018 <laughs> it's been a little while for mcmillan in this series this is a good opportunity for him though if he can hold on to this starting position his teammate jesse turner doing a good job mason brown in fourth a rookie mixing it up with all those veterans up there then gatlin downey andrew miller baby ruiz just went to second oh boy those uncharted guys i tell you they have been very very strong this season no doubt about it and this is Ruiz's first career start. Miller just went back to second. McMillan goes to third. Turner in fourth. Mason Brown, LJ Semedo in sixth. 
And somebody else, Keegan Thompson, just went to second, our points leader. And Thompson did not have a good run at the Darlington Raceway. He still the points leader, of course, but he lost a lot of ground to Kukulon, who won that race, of course. Only 21 points ahead of him coming into this race. Brett Sierra just went to third. Great run for Sierra there and Buck Racing. Then it's Miller, McMillan, Turner, Mason Brown, LJ Cemento, BB Ruiz, and Tristan Allen just went to the top. Oh boy. We could have ourselves a very, very interesting race tomorrow. We got these group of guys starting up front. Hey, Brandon Nelson just went to third as well. And now Ben Young going up to the third position. But Tristan Allen, who actually came very close to winning this race last year, looking for his third pole of the season. And we're only 13 races in. We have yet to have a multiple-time winner, but... We actually have three drivers who have won multiple poles this season. Tristan Allen, Ryan Durrani, and Jordan Lopez. The only of those three who have won so far this season is Lopez, who won from the pole at Martinsville. This is a place where you can win from the pole. It's very possible. That's all I'm going to say about that. Been a great run there for Tristan Allen, and now that we're kind of halfway through this session, only unless these guys come back down the pit lane and get some fresh good years. I do not believe that uh, we're going to see much of a change up inside that top 10. Take a look at the rest of the results right there. A lot of guys all over the place, but I think all these times are so far faster than all the times that we ended up having in the uh, uncharted session. But no change inside the top 10. It's still Allen, Garcia, Ben Young, and third that's a good run for the homestead winner and uh, that's a good opportunity for him to possibly be the first driver to win a uh, win two races this season i should say um watch out for ben young in that five machine he comes in with the second wild card but that wild card battle is tight right now between eli bright ben young sam Adio, jordan lopez and ace garcia they're all on each other right there then a little ways back is Alonzo and Fitzwater. Neither of those guys, as a matter of fact, for both Alonzo and Fitzwater, their only top tens of the season have been their race victories. It's not the case for the rest of the race winners so far this season, at least the full-time race winners. Heck, even uh, for John, well, John Andrews, his win was uh, the only one. Nationally, boy, I don't even think has been in the ride since he won at uh, the Auto Club Speedway. But, uh, but either way... I definitely would watch out for Ben Young. That's a good opportunity for him. Third place here at Dover is a great place to start. Keegan Thompson's going to be on the inside lane in fifth. Andrew Miller, Jesse Turner. Those are guys you really got to watch out for, especially Turner and Thompson. Those are two guys who have been very consistent this season. They're both top five in points coming into this race. And uh, they're looking to extend their gap on the rest of the field to have a good chance in making it into the chase. We're halfway through the regular season now. So we got 12 races until we set the... 10, 12 driver chase I should say um, and that last race before the chase begins is Michigan uh, the NOF is 500 in late August so we're going to have a couple of off weeks um, in between that time but it's, it's not going to be that long before we get to late August and uh, we're setting the chase for these guys but it's going to be an interesting race tomorrow uh, with this cast of characters starting up front especially with this guy leading the field and uh, considering how well he did here last year, watch out for him. Tristan Allen has not had a good run as of late, but he's had a relatively consistent season, 16th in points. Uh, he actually was top 10 in points uh, a little bit earlier on in the season. He's fallen off a little bit, but this is a great opportunity for him to shoot his way inside that top 10 again. A lot can happen. Sebastian Kukul on our last winner. We'll have to see where he is. Number 13 machine. Uh, 34th, second in points. Definitely not the way he wanted to back up that win he had at Darlington last week. Uh, but I think he just moved himself out of that position. Where did he go? Sixth. Wow, just like that. <laughs> we were talking about him, and uh, apparently he put some fresh tires on. And now Sebastian Kukulon, who's second in the points, is currently sixth quickest here. And that's going to push Miller and... Jesse Turner from the outs from the inside lane, I should say. That's going to put McMillan and Brett Sierra on that inside lane. 
Matter of fact, uh, well, actually, Keegan Thompson's going to be on the outside lane because he's got the tiebreaker on Brandon Nelson, and Brett Sierra is going to have the tiebreaker on Andrew Miller. Um, but Thompson does have more points than Brandon Nelson, so Thompson will actually start fourth, and Brandon Nelson will start fifth if it stays that way. Of course, Kukulon came in there late and uh, grabbed that fast time, looking to go back-to-back. -back. Of course, that'd be, uh, that'd be something if Kukulon could go back-to-back -back in this series after he went as long as he did without even getting a race victory. Went all of last year without winning in this series. There's Jesse Turner, currently 10th fastest right now. Of course, Turner's had a very good season so far, currently 5th in points. 51 points behind Keegan Thompson, but about 31 points ahead of the cutoff. 34 to be exact ahead of the cutoff for Jesse Turner. So he could still theoretically lose it in one race, but that's a pretty comfortable gap this point in the season. And if he can rack up some more top 10s, he only has three top 10s. Of all the guys inside the top 10 in points, he and Cody still have the least amount of top 10s with three apiece. Uh, Cody Sills had a good season, too, in that 37 machine. Um, it's interesting, though, you know, Turner, like the top four guys have been Thompson, Kukulon, Semedo, and Williams. No doubt about it. And then there's a bit of a gap between those guys and everyone else. You got Turner and Reeves, who have had, they've kind of in their own little area. But once you get the seventh in points with Brett Sierra, that's when everyone is just right on each other. So you can say Cody Sills had a good season, but his average finish, you know, he only has, what, 30 points on, he only has 20 points on 14th place, Eli Bright. So there's not much of a gap there once you get to that second half of the points. So it's going to be interesting to see how it all goes down. But it's really going to be interesting to see how this race goes tomorrow, noon Eastern time. Tristan Allen wins the pole for the third time this season in the NOFS Earl Cup Series. Brandon Nelson and Keegan Thompson tied. Thompson has the tiebreaker on Nelson. Then you have Brett Sierra and Andrew Miller who tied, but Sierra comes into this race seventh in points, so he has the advantage on Miller. Uh, Trey Smith and Shane Lake. I ooh, that's a tough one. I think Trey Smith actually has it. Smith has been doing an excellent job as of late in that 92. He's rebounding this season, so Trey Smith has the advantage on Shane Lake. Zachary Fitzwater and Owen Miles tied, and I believe Owen Miles has that on Fitzwater, and he does, so that'll switch. And then way back in the field, Alphabee and Lopez. Lopez has the advantage on Alphabee. And then you also have Alexander Rowe and Cameron Garlington who tied. And Garlington has the advantage on Rowe. So we're going to do a little bit of swapping around for this race. Um, but other than those ties and uh, what I mentioned right there, that is how they line up for tomorrow's Mr. Good Bar 400 here from Dover. 80 laps of action around the Monster Mile. Tune in at noon Eastern time. It's going to be a good one. If you're wondering why this uh, qualifying session was so early today, it's because Turkey Hill National Series action is at four today, not five, uh, so that we can watch season one champion Roger Karouf in the Arca East race, the real life one. Uh, yes, I'm going to flex that one. I, I'm, I know. Uh, hey, uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Like I mentioned, Turkey Hill Series coming up at four over on AG Racing from Dover. And then tomorrow, noon Eastern time, it's the Mr. Goodbar 400 here at the Dover International Speedway over on AG Racing. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you guys later.